today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at the upcoming pattern. We do have two potential severe weather events happening here in the upcoming pattern that we need to go over today. We're going to be specifying those dates because as you guys know, I love uh, kind of pointing out some dates for you guys to mark in your calendars. I think that leads towards a lot of awareness and that is a good way of going about things. Just kind of waking up, looking at your calendar and realizing, oh, there's potential severe weather today might be enough just to get some people to look. Uh, at the Storm Prediction Center and go ahead and see that there is, in fact, a severe weather threat. So we're going to be pointing out those types of threats and, and kind of where we expect that to happen, although that can change a little bit. As we just reached this afternoon today, we can see our first low is developing here, and it does have that kind of warm front feature, which typically is either behind or above the low. And as you can see, it's above and behind. Snowfall behind over here, some rainfall above. That is going to be kind of your more warm front side of things. So we can see that already developing. And now this actually was some tropical activity over Florida where almost a foot of rainfall fell, I believe, near, uh, I think, Miami up through uh, kind of like the east coast there of southern Florida up through Fort Lauderdale or so. That is what I heard at least. I didn't actually kind of check if that was a fact or not, but I heard that a, a lot of rainfall fell uh, in those areas and flooding did occur. So that is unfortunate and this did have some tropical characteristics and that's probably why that ended up happening. As we reach... Towards tomorrow afternoon, what we see already taking place is that this tropical activity is leading towards some showers in the mid-Atlantic. But not only that, uh, but we see this low here developing over Kansas and Missouri. We can see this cold front underneath, warm front up above. So now we do have that cold front complex. And that is leading towards some potential severe weather uh, underneath for a lot of these areas here and thunderstorm activity in general. Now... As we approach Sunday here, what we end up seeing is a much more intense look. Uh, we do have a bit of uh, something going on there, a bit of a frontal boundary behind. And this is caused basically by a lot of this cold wind getting shoved down from the north in such a way that it's kind of curling in. This is usually associated with some pretty strong uh, lows in general. We do see this warm front still up there. And now we can see this cold front as well extending all the way down towards Mexico. So you can tell that that is a very intense look. And on this, we'd be looking at severe weather and thunderstorms for all of these areas. So from Michigan, take it all the way down towards Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, South Carolina, North Carolina, Florida. All of these areas would be experiencing potential severe weather and even thunderstorms with this for Sunday, April 16th. So please mark those dates because this is a 994 millibar low pressure center. And that is quite strong for this type of uh, event this time of year. Uh, as you can see... We have two lows taking place here, a little bit of some broad low pressure here between these two. Uh, by the time we're reaching Monday into uh, Tuesday here, 17th into 18th. And then we're going to basically see a more quiet pattern in the east here for Tuesday. But what we see is some low pressure happening just east of the Rockies in here. We have a 988 up here, a 995 down here. And some snowfall taking place for the mountainous west as well is probably worth noting also. Uh, jet stream by this point looks very volatile. We have a trough here in the west, ridge happening just east of the Rockies, and then a pretty flat trough descending and peaking near the east coast and then curling back in. So that is a pretty intense uh, jet stream pattern, to say the least. By Wednesday, what we see is we end up getting a primary low out of all that mess that we saw all over the Rockies. This is a 997 over Kansas. This is how all of our severe weather events this year have been starting off. And sure enough, we're seeing something similar to that happening again. Definitely a very, very interesting scenario here. Now, this would, again, not be featuring a cold front yet. As you can see, there's nothing underneath this quite yet there. But as we reach a little bit further into Thursday, the 20th, what we end up seeing uh, is some activity beginning to take place underneath this low. 997 there, and we'd be watching these areas in particular for potential severe weather there on, uh, that would be Thursday into Friday there. Um, so we see that taking place, and I think think what we're going to see here is a transfer back with a lot of this low pressure back to this one, which is kind of a worst case scenario because we could get a one-two punch here. I'll kind of explain that in a minute. But I want to go over uh, the fact that we do have a pretty major snowstorm taking place across a lot of the upper Midwest there. Uh, we'll take a look at the total snowfall in a little bit, but that does look quite heavy at this point. And sure enough, that back end low does end up taking over here. And we see that over Illinois and Indiana with some potential thunderstorms and severe weather underneath right here. Certainly going to be a very interesting scenario. 
and you can see that by time we're reaching kind of Friday into Saturday overnight, uh, we could see a very intense line of thunderstorms taking place here for the deeper south, uh, kind of your Appalachian Mountain Range into the Ohio Valley. Certainly uh, a very intense thunderstorm situation. We see this low is taking place now near Lake Erie, and this cold front is extending all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. So this would lead towards a lot of thunderstorms for many different states. It does reach the East Coast overnight Saturday into Sunday, and then it eventually is basically said and done by Sunday into Monday. And what we see here is a very uh, intense trough over the eastern United States, especially for this late into April that we're seeing here. This would be near April 23rd into 24th. So very intense and a large warm up, by the way, here for the West is what we're seeing at that point. Definitely very interesting scenario. Uh, and we're seeing a lot more activity now picking up even at, compared to yesterday's model run. So this is getting more and more uh, active looking. As we take a look at this total precipitation, you can see that we do get, again, storms moving on short of the northwest, but really you take a look at the eastern half of the nation and activity is looking more and more prominent here. Uh, inches and inches of rainfall, reds being two to five inches, which for a 10 day period, I think this would be above average for all of these areas. So certainly a very active 10 days coming up. We can see that as we take a look at this total snowfall, we obviously get our mountainous west in this with a lot of snowfall, even feet in some places. But definitely it's this upper Midwest area, South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan, where we're seeing one to two feet, maybe even more in some spots over the next 10 days. Certainly very late for them, seeing things this late in April. Uh, this is just a really extreme uh, snowfall event again this spring as they've kind of seen a few of these here this spring uh, certainly going to be something to watch moving forward we do upload every single day so we will of course go over this as we continue to see how things are expected to unfold i just want to take a quick real uh, look here at this this upcoming temperature pattern as you can see right now this is no surprise uh, but we do have a pretty massive trough in the west and then a ridge here for the central here, as you can see, and the east, where we see a lot of warm air surging for these areas. And we see a lot of this cold air moving down the west, uh, where these mountainous areas are seeing a lot of this cooler air. As we just keep going with this, though, uh, we can see that that cold front is going to begin taking place here. So we can see a boundary right in here where this cold air is trying to push its way eastward. So this is going to be by about Saturday into Sunday. Uh, and even by Sunday, we're going to see this very close to the East Coast here. So we see cold air diving, warm air surging, and our low is somewhere in here. So this is actually, just even looking at this temperature anomaly chart here, this is a very, very intense look here, by the way, um, as far as, as the, the storm goes and the temperature differences. And then we see this big Arctic blast happen here for early in the week here, Tuesday into Wednesday. We see things warming in the east that's going to continue to take place Wednesday through Friday. So we see something like this is what's taking place. A lot of warmth heading up the south central and up the east. Something like this. We do see a lot of this cold trying to push eastward as we have our next cold front coming through. And this, this is going to be associated with that major storm. The next major event that we see, and we look at how intense this Arctic blast potentially looks at that end of that model run. This would just be an absolute monstrous Arctic blast, potentially messing with crops or any plants that you've planted outside. We're going to, have to watch this closely because this would be an intense Arctic blast to say the least. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, we do upload every single day, like I mentioned earlier, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss those daily uploads. Also, be sure to hit the bell, bell icon for daily notifications when we upload. Like the video if you did enjoy it, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.